Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a brief look at the Cinnamon 6.2 desktop, which has just been released. And uh, I have read several of the big mainstream articles about this, and it has convinced me that a lot of them are using AI and jumbling up words and uh, don't quite know what's going on. And half of them say you can't even try this yet. Well, I just installed it. It's available in the Arch repositories. Uh, some of them did point out that, yes, you can install it through Arch. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and have a look at what's actually changed, and I'll show you instead of text. So we're running Arch Linux here, and we're running the Cinnamon version 6.2.2. This is the brand new version. We are on X, and uh, this does still have that experimental Wayland, which I have not actually tried on this install yet. But what we wanted to do is kind of cover what I think were some of the major things. First, let me talk about two things I can't show you today because we are in a VM. Uh, one of those is the power module, which is actually on the system tray, but it's not showing because we're in a VM and there's no batteries here. They do have a new battery power system, which shows you a lot more status and information about the powers. Now, back even in 6.0, it was still pretty good as I look at my Endeavor system right now on another computer, which runs production. And uh, I think that's Cinnamon 6.0 or 6.1 or something. But I actually see the uh, the wireless mouse and the keyboard, and they're getting kind of low. And I do know that every time I actually touch the keyboard, I get a low power indicator. So, you know, trying to change the batteries in that. Uh, so you can't see that in here. The other major change they did is when you're using a VPN, they will overlay the network with a padlock. So you can always see that, yes, you're on the network, and yes, you are connected to the VPN. Uh, now that is actually something that I know it has done in the past. I'm not sure why people are saying that's new. Uh, I've not used that in desktop, but I do know that uh, I use my um, uh, my VPN regularly on my Linux Mint, which is not even running six yet. I don't think I can't remember which version the other one's running. Uh, but uh, I think it, the difference is that one gives you a specific icon when you're running a VPN versus a padlock over your network status. That might be what the difference is. Now, on to things that I can show you. The first one of the major things that you'll find is in the settings. Now, when I installed this on Arch, this would not be the case when we get it in, in Linux Mint, of course. But online accounts was not in here. And this is because the online accounts was removed from your main system settings uh, because this is based on uh, GNOME's online accounts, which switched to GTK4. And there has been that discussion about your online accounts uh, or not online, your uh, GTK4 really diverging away and trying to not play nice with anything else that's not known. And because of that, they re released the online accounts now as an X app. So what I did here is I went ahead to the, in, uh, to the GitHub page and I installed the X app uh, system in order to get this guy working. And uh, what we see over here is exactly what we would expect. Although I am noticing there's a few extra settings I hadn't seen before. Of course, we have our Google. Uh, we have our Next Cloud. Let me click. So uh, these are going to be using your authentication. Here's your server address. Uh, here's your Microsoft account. We also have the Microsoft 365 account, which I'm guessing is what gives us access to your drive and other things related to Microsoft 365. And then a few other options here as well. I, I like this. This is a, a new one that's rolled out more recently. Just a basic email account here so that any system like Evolution, I should have Evolution installed on this, yes. So if I were to set up my my emails here, Evolution should be able to pull it directly from the online accounts rather than setting up directly inside of Evolution. I know it works like that for contacts and calendars inside of Nextcloud. Uh, so, uh, and then of course we have a Microsoft Exchange as well. So this new online accounts X app is actually very good. Uh, this is added into, uh, I had to install this. If you're running this on Arch, you might have to install that as a separate application. And the instructions on the X app page are actually quite comprehensive.
Now, another one where a lot of the articles said, you know, you're searching for a an application and the uh, the search bars there. Uh, just an FYI, the search bar's always been there. What they're actually talking about is the preferred application. Excuse me, not the preferred application, the startup applications. So when you go to a startup application and you want to start something up on default when the machine starts up and you hit add and have a choose application, this is where that new search bar is showing up. Okay, So if I want to boot up Evolution every time I turn the computer on, I can now search for it rather than hunting the menu for it. That is what people are talking about when you're seeing that inside the 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 menu. I really think some people are just looking at things or feeding AI. I have no idea, but that's where the start page, um, uh, the, the search bar searching for application shows up. That's in your startup applications. That's still a minor tweak. Now, the other tweak that is, again, fairly minor, and most of these things are working on behind the scenes much better, but another thing down here is you see that uh, I have this little... Um, Pine, this little palm tree here. Well, this is actually your user icon applet. You can now configure that in order to show your uh, your image as well. So here, of course, is your system settings, your logout, your switch user. Well, if you go over into your applets and you look at your user applet and your configurations, this is where that is. This is a new uh, a new feature to this applet where you can display the user image on the individual panel. So remember, if you turn it off, you just got that generic user icon. Now it can actually pull what your image is. So that is uh, a new feature. Of course, displaying your name is old feature that's always been there. So that is what we're talking about with your user applet. So if you did like that user applet, you can do that. The other major applet that has changed is the corner bar. It's your corner bar down here, which will minimize all windows and show the desktop. There are a couple of other new options we have inside of here. So we have the shift click action. So you can show desktop, show desklets, show workspace selector, or show the, uh, the window scale selector. So if I come down here, what is that? Shift and click. So if I shift click it, it's going to show me my workspace switcher in, instead of showing the desktop. So there's your desktop holding shift. We get our workspace switcher there. Uh, other fun things, if you are into things like your uh, workspaces, and I don't use workspaces a whole lot, but let me just go ahead and move a few applications around there. Uh, so here, if we're using workspaces, they do have a new feature where you can just uh, middle click a workspace and delete it. And then it's just going to move the application uh a little uh, to the left so you can still go ahead and create new workspaces uh, i didn't notice if there was a hotkey to create one uh, but you might just have to still right click down here and add a workspace if you want to add workspaces back in so uh, but for those that use workspaces you do have uh, you do have that option uh, and then of course your alt tab they just uh, kind of improve the way the uh, the system, the previews look uh, using that. So that is another one of your minor changes. Now, the other thing that they have added finally, maybe some people might say, is under your menu categories, they've actually added a science category. Uh, of course, it also depends on where the applications are, are launching to. I installed G Calculator, hoping that would be under science. Now it's under accessories. Uh, I ad added STAP. Uh, simulate physics experiments. Now that's under education. Now, there you go. GL, GLGebra. There you go. Uh, dynamic mathematics software. That's science. There you go. So we do have a science menu now, of course. If you are unaware, you can always uh, customize your menu if you wanted to move things around. Like if you're like, okay, I don't want to use an education one. You can actually, uh, you could cut this guy out of here and you can put it down here and you can paste it down to here. Uh, and so if you do want to uh, get rid of things, I think on Reboot, it's going to clear that out since I cut it out of there instead of uh, uh, copied it. But you can see that you can go down here and you can uh, toggle what, what shows up and where things are at. I could always just turn that off there and it's still under science. So let's do that. 
And so now you'll see that my education is gone and now I have everything under the science where I wanted it. So those are neat little functions. Now the next major thing that they did is if you remember in six, they added your actions. What some of the articles were reporting is in Nemo organizing actions. Now that's under your action system. What they've done is they've added this new layout. If you remember what the actions do is it allows you to add new features to your context menu. What this layout option gives you the ability to do is to sort and organize and customize everything. So you can see here on our right click, what I've done here is I've added a little space here up right above the GNOME system monitor. Of course, the GNOME system monitor now allows me to pull this guy up. Now, it'd be really nice if we had the ability to pull up like HTOP with that instead of the GNOME system monitor. But as of right now, we don't have that option. Who knows? Maybe someday in the future we'll get one of those. But we can also create folders. So if I did not want to have all those extra items down here, I can throw everything into a single folder and then I can go ahead and create new folders. I can actually set new icons and I can even change their names. In fact, wallpapers isn't called wallpapers. Uh, that one's called um, like change desktop background, I think. But you can go ahead and give it a name. You can go ahead and give it a, uh, a custom icon here and you can just go ahead and make those changes. Now, the only thing I noticed that's a little wonky is the organization of these. These seem to only take effect if you restart the system, not even restarting Cinnamon. So here, if we'll just go ahead and click the button to restart Cinnamon, you can see that the layout still is not correct. But when I shut the system down and reboot it, things do align themselves right. So you might have to do a reboot when you're organizing your actions menu. So this is though really nice in that we can create this folder, we can change this, let's do, we'll just call this actions instead. Hit the save button. And I think I spelled that wrong, but that's okay. You can see that uh, oh, right there actually, it did reset our, uh, did reset everything correctly. I don't know, let's, let's try that again. Let's move our wallpapers down, right click, and doesn't change it, but let's go ahead and change this. Let's just change this back to settings. Let's see if that actually fixes it. Display, reset, yeah, there you go. So just go ahead and change your folder and change your folder back and that'll, uh, that'll actually reset your order there. So you can go ahead and reorder everything. You can create new, new options and organize how your individual um, actions are going to lay out themselves right over here. But uh, those are your major uh, overall changes. Of course, there is one more change, and that is sometimes the NVIDIA cards, which I'm not using here, but sometimes the NVIDIA cards were causing issues with desklets, and they have resolved that issue as well. So let's go ahead and have a look at what the Wayland support happens to look like. So we'll go ahead and log out of our system now. Uh, so up here, let's go have a look over at our Wayland Experimental. I did not try this yet in my initial testing either, so who knows what we are in store for here. Uh, let's go ahead, come over here, display settings, and let's fix our display since I'm in a virtual machine. It doesn't want to respect my virtual machine. Keep that configuration, and it looks as though... Looks as though Wayland does not want to adjust my wallpaper. Let me see if I can just adjust my wallpaper around a little bit here see if that might fix it or not mm, no not really <laughs> okay so our wallpaper's not working super well with uh with that but uh let's see what else might be working uh here's evolution we'll pull that up pull up g calculator Firefox, System Monitor. I'm just going to pull up a bunch of things, see if anything seems a little wonky or not. All right, so uh, no immediate issues over here. Um, so that's good. There's mail applications. Okay, we'll close that out. Here's our processes. Here's our system resources. 
So things are running fairly, uh, fairly smooth, fairly lightweight. Uh, looks like the only major bug I'm having here initially on Wayland is the wallpaper is not respecting a screen size change. Uh, let's go ahead and have a look at our display settings again, and let's see what happens if we try different sizes. Now it looks like it does not really want to uh, change that uh, change that wallpaper size for us. Uh, yeah, let's just cancel that. That's big. <laughs> I can't see that. And there we are. We see we've got uh, so we've got other issues there. And yikes. Okay, I think we're good. Notice our icon is a little wobbly down there. All right, so so far Wayland supports looking. Uh, decent as well. There is our quick look of the Cinnamon Desktop 6.22. I am certainly looking forward to this rolling out in the next version of Linux Mint, which should be coming around the corner before too long. So with that, if you like this type of content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so, and we will see you all next time.